Hello, I'm Ken Alston. Thanks for tuning in to my talk about simplistic green solutions to wicked unsustainability. I'm a founding partner in Circularity Edge, a consulting, mentoring and technology delivery firm working with governments and companies to lead the implementation of a sustainable circular economy. Today, as we take part in the Spin-Up Summit, we're facing the consequences of an unprecedented global shutdown as a result of country-by-country -country responses to the COVID-19 outbreak. It's giving us all pause for thought as we shelter in place and use technology like this virtual summit in place of travel conferences. It's changing our habits, our perceptions and our behaviours in ways we could not have imagined just a few short months ago. I've been fortunate to be actively involved in sustainability for over 30 years. In fact, ever since the phrase sustainable development was first coined now 33 years ago, sitting worldwide on what we now call the circular economy for the past 20 years. Recently, with all the focus on post-COVID-19 recovery, I've seen a dramatic increase in references to green this and that, how we need to take advantage of the recovery to invest in green, the Green New Deal, and so on. New, and so on. New books are being published on things like green swans, and there are articles in the newspapers and on, in the media generally about green and that list grows daily. In my opinion, putting the prefix green to anything risks condemning the topic to becoming a niche, an add-on, something that's nice to, do, nice to do if we can, but probably costs too much. Organic foods are still stuck in this dilemma. We would all like to only eat fresh, healthy, organic food, but it's still a very small part of most supermarket offerings and customer purchases. Green is too easily sidelined by politicians and by, especially in times like these when economics seems to be the main driver of decision making. Right now, here in the United States, where I'm recording this, there is little of no chance the current administration will make any efforts towards any post-COVID-19 Green New Deal. Likewise in Brazil and probably elsewhere. Some countries in Europe will do so. There's been money set aside for circular economy initiatives for some time in the EU. But why do we still persist with this need for adding a green name or label? As I said in a recent Circularity Edge podcast, green is just a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum in the middle of the visible light, middle of the visible light range. There's a huge spread of frequencies on either side of the visible spectrum that are valuable too. From infrared to microwaves, radio and TV on one side, and ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays on the other side, it's a 10 to the power 25 frequency range. That's one with 25, zero, 25 zeros after it. It's a big number, hard to conceptualize. Green is a very tiny slice of a huge spectrum. In the same way, we can see everything we make and do in the world as the whole spectrum of human activity. Talking up a narrow green segment pigeonholes what should be an expansive Green isolates what should be applied elsewhere all the time and forces it into a marginal issue. So I might say to Kermit the Frog, yes, it's not easy being green, but probably because it's too narrow and too self-limiting. It's time, even past time, to drop past time to drop the green sheen and go for the whole thing. Let's work out how to design and redesign all of our systems and products and services so we can transition to a sustainable circular economy. And remember, circularity on its own isn't automatically sustainable. I can easily design an, un I can easily design an unsustainable circular economy. Just try to reuse all of today's products, like cars and chairs, that were never designed for safe cycling. I believe the answer lies hidden in the dilemma that we're facing about sustainability. After 33 years of active, intense, directed efforts to be not sustainable, despite lots of well-meaning efforts by me and many, many others, we're arguably less sustainable today than we were 33 years ago. Why is this? Well, we might say that sustainability is a wicked problem. It's a problem that's multidimensional, interconnected and complex. We've discovered unintended consequences when we do one thing, it affects another thing in ways we didn't imagine or predict. So part of the problem is we've been operating at a simple, even simplistic level. It's the difference between a concept and reality. Concepts are simple. 
Concepts are simple. They're designed to change your perspective, your paradigm, or point of view. If you're a business person focused on the financial bottom line, I can give you a simple concept of sustainable development by introducing the idea that as a company, you need to have a triple bottom line, one that includes environment bottom line elements. As John Elkington first said 26 years ago, way back in 1994, people, planet, and the profits. So now my business paradigm is changed by a simple but elegant concept. But my business reality is a complex operation in a global economy. Plus, now the world just shut down. Complexity, fragility, and scale effects are the reality of the world. Not only the world of business, but the natural world too, of which I remind you, we are a part. Today, with apologies to artist Madonna and chemist Dr. Michael Brongart, to artist Madonna and chemist Dr. Michael Brongart, co-author of the book Cradle to Cradle, Remaking the Way We Make Things, I want to talk about living in a material world. Yes, of course, this is the title of the famous Madonna song and the refrain, because we're living in a material world and I am a material girl. You know that we're living in a material world. This is also how Dr. Brongart used to joke and refer to himself when he was talking with his co-author, William McDonough. Michael would joke that he was just Bill's material boy, always talking about chemicals, materials and products cycling safely in technical and biological cycles. And of course, that is what we're talking about with the circuit. Fundamentally speaking, it is a truism. We are living in a material world. We always have been and we always will be. And it's at the heart of what we're trying to achieve with designing a circular economy. History teaches us that empires and countries have been built and lost on the back of quests for materials. On the back of quests for materials. Here and now, the sudden breakdown of the fragile global supply chains is demonstrating to every company, every government, every person, the need for resilience, for anti-fragility, and for security of supply of certain critical chemicals, materials, and products that over time with globalization, we've ceded primarily to China to make for us. Another example of simplicity of concept and complexity of reality is the circular economy itself. Back in 2002, McDonald and Brongart introduced the ideas we now call the circular economy as two cycles, the natural world's biological cycle we needed to create for all the products we made. It's another example of a paradigm shifting concept. A simple idea, two cycles, but operating in a highly complex and interconnected global economy in towns and cities with people all over the world on a complex bio-based planet. This planet. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation built on this concept and created the butterfly diagram. It adds some valuable additional detail on how the cycles work. Again, it's a useful concept, still somewhat simple, and it helps us change our view of how the world should work in a circular economy. But it's, but it's still simplistic. There are not two separate wings of the butterfly. The technical cycle is on Earth, so it's embedded in the biological cycle. They're intimately connected, not separate. The concept is simple to change our paradigm, but our solutions need to recognize the quality. Now, I still see that the predominant activities that are being implemented in various countries with initiatives like uh, national roadmaps are rooted in waste management, still focused on reducing the, the negative consequences of the linear economy. This is not the same thing as moving to a circular economy. Yes, it's a good thing to do because you're minimizing the negative consequences of what we're doing today, and it helps by a little time to make the real changes we need towards true circular economy designs and business models. For example, the five circular business models expressed by Accenture back in 2014 are circular supplies, choosing materials that are able and safe to cycle in either the biological or technical cycle. Resource recovery, collecting materials and products at the end of their use, concentrating and reprocessing them for, reu for reutilization. Product use extension, making the product last longer by repair, upgrading, refurbishing and reselling. Sharing platforms, making more use of materials and products that already exist through shared ownership and use. And product as a service, 
selling the service further than the product itself, with the seller retaining ownership and responsibility for the product. Today I want to mention an idea on the fourth of these circular business models, sharing platforms. And in particular, I want to introduce you to a new sharing platform that's rolling out now in the moving and relocation, relocation industry. It's a good example of the use of digitalization, of applying technology to help provide new solutions to the complexity that to this date we've been ignoring. The platform is QMonk. It connects all the actors in the moving and relocation industry in a way that both simplifies the job of scheduling that both simplifies the job of scheduling a move and also integrates the move with existing transport infrastructure to find the best, lowest cost, fastest routes, movers and carriers. And as a smart network, it can even find jobs for movers who are registered in the system. It piggybacks on the empty or partial loads to reduce the number of trucks and journeys that are needed. It can also connect with a new smart cube network designed and integrated with advanced analytics to track location of packages by GPS, speed, security, and other important measures. If you've got a move or know someone who needs to relocate, you need to look at scheduling a cube monk move. You can find more about them at www.circularityedge.com slash cubemonk. In the next 90 days at Circularity Edge, we'll be announcing new circular economy initiatives that move circularity from talk initiatives that move circularity from talk to action. We'll be providing ways to develop new servant leaders to implement the circular economy, and we'll start to roll out other technology platforms like CubeMonk to provide the means to put the circular economy in practice. I'd like to invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn with the idea first, reduce the negative impacts of the linear economy, and second, start the transition to truly circular business models. Let's do this everywhere, not just in small pigeonholed green niches. Let's understand the value of simple concepts, but also the need to recognize and solve for the more complex real world we live and work. Together, we're building a growing army of global citizens who want to lead the needed change from linear to sustainably circular. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me talk about what I like to call the active implementation edge of circularity, along with my colleagues at www. along with my colleagues at www.circularityedge.com. In a few weeks from now, Circularity Edge will be launching the Circular Academy. The Academy will offer a comprehensive experiential leadership course with an emphasis on what's needed following the COVID-19 shutdown and recovery. Our first July. If you have any questions about what I've been talking about today, or if you have any particular challenges you're facing, you can schedule a private call with me to discuss your biggest circularity challenges. The website is on the screen here at https colon slash slash calendly.com slash Ken Alston slash challenge. Please stay safe and healthy. Together we can create the sustainable circular world we want. Thanks again for tuning in today. This is Ken Alston saying bye for now.